Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to be installing a Comet GP3 antenna for my Radio Shack here at the house. It's an easy installation, not very many steps and it's not difficult at all. Stick around through the whole video and see what steps you have to do to get this antenna working for you. Right here on KN4ZEC Ham Radio Talks. I will be assembling a Comet GP3 dual band antenna. This antenna I purchased from Gigaparts.com out of Huntsville. They shipped this one out of Huntsville. They have another uh, location I believe in Nevada. The Comet GP3 is a dual band 2 meter 70 center, uh, centimeter antenna fiberglass. Uh, it stands at 5 foot 11 inches and I will be putting this antenna on top of an old satellite dish mount that's up on my roof. So let me go ahead and open up this uh, package here and I'll put this thing together and put it up on the roof, mount it, and then we'll see what it looks like. The parts of the Comet GP3 antenna are minimal. The only tool you'll really need is an adjustable wrench, but you can use a fixed wrench if you want. I just choose to use an adjustable wrench. It's easy for me just to carry around just one wrench. The parts are the antenna as shown on the top. You'll have a lock nut and washer to uh, mount your support pipe to your antenna. Uh, you have some uh, silicon some, uh, that is protective uh, coating for the coax itself. It comes with three radials which serve as your ground plane, two U-bolts, two mounts, and again the support pipe. We'll start by assembling the radials first. These radials are used as a ground plane for this antenna. I would recommend taking your bolt and screwing it all the way back, furthest back as you can, so all the exposed threads are shown here. Take these uh, radials and simply screw them into the hole as shown here. To the hand tight. Then take your wrench and just tighten them up a little bit more just to make sure they're secure. You don't have to really torque them on, you just want to make sure they're secure. Follow again by moving the nut all the way to the rear position as you see here. And attach the second radial. Once hand tightened, take your wrench and secure the nut as such. Repeat for the third radial again. Once again, if I can get this in focus, taking this nut and put, screwing it all the way to the rear and excuse the focus, the camera doesn't want to focus on it insert into your third radio hole mount until hand tightened taking your wrench again and tightening the nut Securely. You don't want to over tighten it, you just want to make sure it's nice and secure. And this is what it'll look like after it's installed. You have all three of your radials. Now let's go to the next uh, installation step. The next step for installation is a personal recommendation of mine, and that's to go ahead and to install the mounting bracket to the support pipe itself. Now the reason I want to do that is I don't want to get on the roof and have to worry about fumbling around putting these on uh, the pipe itself. I want them to be on the pipe. I'm going to put them on here snugly but not so snugly I can't uh, loosen them up and adjust them and then retighten them to make the final adjustment. Now 
Another thing you want to make sure of is when you do uh, mount these to the pipe and you put the pipe onto the antenna, make sure you do not mount the pipe itself to the antenna because your coax will be connecting to your 239 connector here uh, by, and you're going to run the coax clear through the uh, pipe itself. So again, you don't want to go ahead and uh, mount this pipe to the antenna itself. Now one important thing also, in speaking about the uh, support pipe, is when you mount these brackets to the pipe, make sure they're as close to level, but even though you can adjust them, making sure they're as close as level, make your work a little bit easier to uh, to where the the part of this pipe right here that mounts onto your or grafts onto the uh, mounting pole itself is just parallel to the back side of this mounting hole here. Now make sure you have this mounting hole clear. You don't want to mount this way and not have that hole lined up. That's important because your your lock nut with your lock washer goes in here and secures the support pipe to the antenna itself. So let's just go ahead and slide these mounting pole or brackets on here. And what I would do is I would just go ahead and for now just hand tighten on hand tighten these on here. Like I said you don't want to torque them on but you want them on secure enough where they're not just going to slide off. And for the sake of uh, just making it easier on yourself, I would have the nuts facing the same way. Just makes it a little bit easier. Now another thing you can do also is you can go ahead and without putting this support pipe on your antenna at all or at first you can go ahead and just uh, mount the brackets onto the pipe and just align the top of these brackets with this mounting hole right here whichever way is easiest for you to do I just chose to do it this way as a demonstration so I can tell you about the uh, the uh, hole right here for your locking nut and to make sure that you don't cover that locking nut and make sure that that locking nut is uh, exposed here so you can go ahead and secure the support pipe to your antenna Okay, now let's gonna go ahead and take it up onto the roof and mount it onto the pipe. Okay, I'm going to be uh, installing the Comet GP3 antenna on this existing satellite uh, dish support on the roof here. I went ahead and removed the satellite dish and dumped commercial TV altogether. I'm now just going with streaming. And uh, this mount's uh, going to be perfect for the antenna itself. I measured from the tip of this mount to the ground and it is uh, about 14 or 15 feet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mount it directly, the antenna to, directly to this uh, antenna mount on the roof here and it should give it at about uh, 17 to 18 feet in height. I will test that and if I need to I will put in a uh, another pipe into this mount itself and if I need to raise it up anymore but I think about 50, or 18 to 20 feet where it will be above ground level should be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mount the uh, antenna bracket to the pole first and then I'll go ahead and I'll put the antenna on the mount itself and run the coax. Okay the antenna support pipe has been installed on the dish support uh, mount on the roof. I've tightened the U-bolts down around the pipe itself. I've left the support pipe somewhat loose. It's secure and snug, but not tightened down because I need to go ahead and run the cable through the support pipe up to the antenna itself. And then I've, when I attach the cable to the antenna itself, it's got to be um, weatherproofed. So I'm going to be putting some tape around it and some other uh, sealant around it to support or to seal the uh, 239 connector to the antennas to keep the water out of it. So once I get the antenna put into the support pipe, I will go ahead and secure, insert and secure the locking bolt and that will secure the antenna in place. I will then go ahead and firmly tighten the support pipe to the mount bracket and then I will run the uh, coax cable through the attic and into my uh, radio shack. Okay, my next step is to go ahead and connect the coax cable to the antenna itself. Now, 
I'm going to do this on the ground before I actually mount the antenna to the uh, mounting pipe uh, because it's just a lot easier and also I'm going to apply some electrical tape around the uh, PL239 I, I'm sorry the uh, SO239 and then I'm going to put some uh, some of this stuff on it is uh, called coax seal it is kind of a plastic stretchy uh, uh, tape that helps preserve and prevent the connector from getting uh, moisture into it. Now this connector itself is going to be inside of the uh, the mounting pipe so it's going to be away from the water itself. It's not going to have any direct contact with the water but using both the electrical tape and the uh, coax seal it'll just give it some added double protection. So let's go ahead and mount our coax. Take our rubber cable off of that. Okay, we have a firm connection there. Go ahead and start by putting some electrical tape on the uh, connector itself. Like I said, the um, electrical tape just basically will give it a little added extra protection from the elements. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more on here. May have cut the first strip a little too short, but we'll go ahead and put some more on here. won't hurt it. And if we ever need to remove it, this tape will come off uh, with a little bit of work. It's not that easy to come off. You kind of have to work it, but it'll come off. Now, I will put my coax seal on it. And I've cut about a, a three inch uh, length strip of it and just peel it away from the paper. Make sure you don't let it stick to itself. And this, as you can see, is flexible. It kind of stretches out and everything so we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart somewhat to kind of make it wider okay let's just make this a little bit wider here what we're going to do is apply this coax uh, seal around our existing electrical tape okay, pull a little bit wider here Okay, now you want to start it at the base and wrap the coax seal around the pipe. And as you can see, it kind of stretched out of place a little bit, but that's okay. It's always moldable again, you can just stretch it back out. And if you need to, you can always get another section of uh, coax seal which I think I'll do. Okay, I went ahead went ahead and got some more coaxial so I'm going to stretch this out some like I did previously. Like I said, you know, you can always get more. It's not going to hurt it if it tears. Just get more and put it on here. Continue to wrap the coax seal around your existing electrical tape. Now, coax seal recommends you do this procedure while you have the antenna mounted. But like I said, this particular antenna mount, the connector itself is going to be in the uh, mounting sleeve of the mounting pipe itself, so you won't be able to get to this while it's in the pipe. So this is the best way to do this procedure, i found. Now, once your seal is on here, the coax seal, go ahead and kind of mold this seal. It's, it's kind of rubbery and plastic, and you'll you'll feel it kind of molding and binding to the seal itself or to the uh, connector itself okay here we go now I've got this on here let's go ahead and mount this uh, antenna onto the mounting pipe alright here we go
Okay, as you can see, I'm feeding the coax cable. down without actually damaging the coax itself. Now, as you can see, I've got the antenna in place. What I want to do now is to secure the cable itself. manually start to screw this bolt in. I have to position myself a little differently here. I'm going to make sure you're not falling off the roof. And one other thing. Which, by the way, is going to be a little challenging with the way this mount, the way the uh, radials are mounted, but we'll do it. Okay. Now you want to make sure this is snug, but you don't want to strip it out. So get it as snug as possible, but avoid over tightening and stripping. is going to run down here and what I am going to do is to actually put some wire ties on this coax here. I'm going to do it in loops. I'm going to do it in loops for two reasons. One, doing it in loops will also
strike, what are you going to do? You know, it's, it's a direct lightning strike, but any bit, any little bit helps. And I think I just, I'm going to redo this one loop here. Okay, I've got my antenna mounted, and as you can see, I've got the cable, the coax running alongside the house. The only thing I need to do is to get the uh, hooks or the uh, anchors, that is, cable anchors, and anchor it to the side of the house. And I've got it running into this. I had to drill a one inch hole to have it go in, either, you know, without any restrictions. So one inch hole there. I've got to go in into the attic and right down here is my office and also uh, it's my computer room plus my radio room so it'll be running through the ceiling into that room and into my rig itself. So that is my installation of the GP3. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, it would I uh, gave you some information on how to install this antenna. It's relatively an easy install. And if you have any questions, please leave your comments below. Just tell me how you how have you installed yours and what antenna did you install and did you run into any problems? And that is again the GP3 antenna install. Thank you for watching. Well there you have it guys. As you can see, installing this Comet GP3 antenna was not difficult at all. It's actually helped me reach out to a repeater, my closest repeater, which is about 10 miles away. And from that repeater beyond, I've actually conversed with some ham radio operators up to, oh, 50, 60 miles away with no problem at all. Signal is clear and strong. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell for future notifications of future videos. And again, until next time, 73, and I'm out.